How does a narcissist test their victim? What do narcissists look for in a victim? How do they kind of run the little tests before they decide who they're into? That's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. Does that sound good to you? If so, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. Would you agree that it's safe to say that we could call a narcissist, at least a toxic narcissist, sort of an emotional stalker, somebody who looks for people who they can easy, easily manipulate and control? And if I said that to you, would it offend you because you are also someone who's been with a narcissist? Let me say this first. I have also had narcissists in my life and been abused by them and I consider myself intelligent. So don't think that I'm in any way trying to take away from your intelligence or your ability to stand up for yourself in this case, okay? But the fact is there are certain qualities that a narcissist looks for in a victim. And that's what we're talking about today. They choose victims and then they go on to charm them, seduce them, push them, mold them, put them into their little victim box, right? Narcissists, because they're not capable of normal human love, they love people for what they do for them as opposed to who they are. One of the things that they do is they feel very angry and frustrated at people who enjoy life because they, even though they seem to enjoy their lives, generally don't. Of course, I'm not talking about specifically material things. A lot of narcissists have plenty of material things. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. I'm talking about deeper things like empathy, like sensitivity, like goals, creativity, different things that you want to do with your life, passions. A lot of the time, narcissists will go after someone who have a strong passion or a strong fire inside of them. But as we all know, narcissists have a way of switching from the amazing, light seeming, fun to be around person that we first met to becoming incredibly critical, very dismissive of people they claim to love. And of course, this just feeds our confusion and our self doubt, right? So I'm going to go over a few traits that narcissists typically look for when they're dealing with finding a new victim. All right, let's just go right through, shall we? One of the first qualities a narcissist will look for in a victim is someone who might have some vulnerability, someone who has had previous experiences that were negative in the whole human field. Let me just give you an example from television, okay? If you've ever seen the show called How I Met Your Mother, there's a character on the show played by Neil Patrick Harris called Barney Stinson. This character, while he's hilarious, and I can't deny enjoying him uh, because he's so outrageous and because I know in real life NPH is gay and he plays such a good womanizer on the show. Uh, this character though is the epitome of a narcissist. So one of the things that Barney Stinson looks for in a woman is what? Daddy issues. He looks for a woman who has been broken, had issues in the past because of something with her father or whatever, and then he comes in and swoops in and does his whole narcissistic love bombing thing, although his are shorter, <laughs> shorter efforts usually because he's a womanizer. So the thing that you have to know is that people who are attractive to narcissists often have some underlying issues like that parent issues or they've been bullied in school or something like that and this has caused them to become very sensitive people and has caused them to want to please the people they do care about and often because people who have been treated this way may find themselves kind of downgrading to from what they could have if that makes any sense so a narcissist sees someone who's vulnerable emotionally because of previous abuse as someone who is easier to glom onto and they can, you know, sort of temporarily help raise that person's self-esteem while at the same time in their minds kind of getting in on somebody who's really too good for them. But they think they're, the, the victim thinks they're not too good because they've been abused and taught otherwise. Does that make sense? Because we doubt our worthiness. It's because we don't believe that we are good enough or that we are worth anything that they are able to get to us. It's what makes us vulnerable to narcissists. The next quality that I'd like to share with you is how when a narcissist is trying to choose a victim, they're looking for someone who is going to be dependable, someone who's going to always be ready to help them anytime they need it. So people who are prime choice victims, they are people who tend to be joiners or helpers. They, you know, if they see somebody in pain, they want to help that person. And that's unfortunately something that an empath naturally does. When you're an empath, you naturally want to help anyone that you see who needs help. So a narcissist picks up on that. Another thing that we are that might shock you, 
is a lot of us have a little bit of perfectionism in us. And now we might not have perfect this or perfect that, but there's something about us that is perfectionistic. And one of the most common perfectionist areas that we have as people who are attractive to narcissists are our perfectionist our perfectionism falls where we need to help people in a perfect way so we might often keep kind of a low profile we're kind of the behind the scenes people and a lot of times we don't want to overshadow our friends and colleagues we want to lift them up we don't want to stand in front of them this of course brings me to my next point which is they want someone who will take personal responsibility for everything, even things they didn't do, and someone who will work really hard for them. So they're looking for someone to be responsible, hard worker, someone who will always comply with whatever assignment they get from the narcissist. So they might test you in little ways, like they might be like, oh, here's 20 bucks, go to the store and get me this, that, or the other thing. And if you go, oh, don't worry about it, I got it. <laughs> Number one, you, you pass the little narcissist test because you're willing to spend your own money. Number two, you don't even think about the fact that they just ask you to go to the store when you just told them you worked all day and your back hurts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that kind of stuff. And then the last quality that I'm going to share with you today is kind of surprising, but it's true. And it is above average intelligence. Yeah, they look for the smart people. How about that? And on the same token, they look for good looking people. Now, I know you're like, I'm not good looking. Well, you know what? You are good looking and and even if you don't think that you're good looking, someone does. The point is, they narcissists look for very smart, intelligent, bright lights. They look for people who are very skilled, very trained, very focused. People who, you know, have enthusiasm. People who are passionate. People who have a lot to say, a lot to do. People who other people are attracted to, okay? Narcissists don't want to be with someone who can walk around you know, looking freaky or scary or weird. They want to be with someone who makes them look good. And if you have high intelligence and you have, you know, a cheery personality and blah, 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 you're perfect for a narcissist. So I know you're sitting here and you're going, well, I'm tired all the time and I'm exhausted and I'm depressed and sad and I don't do my hair anymore or whatever. Well, that's because you're with a narcissist, honey. You have to give yourself a minute and you have to think back to what you were when you met the narcissist. They may have taken you from feeling really good about yourself to feeling really bad about yourself, but somewhere inside of you, there's a person who is beautiful and bright and intelligent and smart and ready to move forward in her life or his life. And if this is you, this is why you were chosen by the narcissist. You have to remember, narcissists are always looking to feed their ego. They want attractive people. They want to get a prize or a trophy person. They have very little respect for weakness. And honestly, they have no interest in someone that just anyone could get their hands on. They want someone that they have to reach up to get. They don't want to reach forward. They don't want to reach down. They want to reach up. Do you understand what I mean? Narcissists are always looking for a better supply, even when they found someone amazing. That's not your fault. It's nothing to do with you. It's not that you're not a good supply. It's just that maybe you have too much independence for them, too much self-respect. The narcissist needs other people to be envious of the person they obtain as their supply. That's why a lot of times they come on real strong in the beginning and they offer you this romance like you've never seen before. It's the love bombing phase. And that's why a lot of times when you get with a narcissist, one of the, one of the things that you hear over and over again is, oh my God, they're too good to be true because they are my friend. <laughs> so once a narcissist picks their target, they'll stop at nothing until they get that person. The bigger the challenge, the harder they'll work. And the more they trash you, the more they tear you down, the more once, once they've obtained you, they're mad at you for making them work that hard if you're a hard to get type of person. Here's the biggest thing. The ultimate ego boost for a narcissist is to take someone who's independent and self-sufficient, strong, and make them completely dependent, completely controlled. Of course, if you dump the narcissist after all of that, it just makes them try harder. And every single time they convince you to take them back, it's sort of like another little notch in the little narcissist's belt. Just remember, you don't deserve it. It's not your fault. Now that you know how a narcissist tests their victim, you know what you need to do to fix it, don't you? What you need to do is have confidence. Love yourself unconditionally and accept nothing less than you deserve. If you don't know what you deserve, sit down and think about it for a while and try 
to figure out what your deal breakers are in a relationship. What will you accept? What will you not accept? That's the question of the day today. What are your deal breakers going to be from now on in a relationship with a person so that you know for sure that you're not allowing yourself to be taken advantage of or abused? Share your thoughts and comments in the comments below, your thoughts and experiences in the comments below, and let's talk about it. All right? That's all I've got for you right now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.